This lockdown life has done to me. Can't see you, don't feel, put on a show. All these cakes I've baked, they'll surely know. But the diet starts today, and a haircut would be great. Tell the gym to open up the gate. Has done a to chance me. to see my friends again. Come see you. A chance to show some love. Come see you, don't feel oh very I good. So it has to be today. For the first time in forever. For the first time in forever. Nothing.
scared of the dark and the devil. Um, some big spiders. Snakes. Uh, monsters. Nightmares. A camel. I, I'm dead of socks and I'm dead of wild doggies when I'm sleeping in bed. I'm scared of mom. I'm scared if God asked me to do something in one of my prayers and I did it from him somewhere. I'm not scared of um, no. I'm I'm scared. I'm scared with a donkey. Hi kids, it's great to join you today for our second Lantern Let's Glow Kids Service. It's exciting news that parks are going to open and we might be able to see our friends again. Hope you're looking forward to that. Now, who can remember our theme of last week? Do you remember? Remember my castle? Well, some of you have made your own castles and I've had them sent in to me this week. Let's have a look at some of those. Wow, they are amazing. Thank you and do send in any crafts that you do today. We love to see what you are making and how you are enjoying our service together. So can we remember our verse? It was from Psalm 46 and verse 1. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. And we've just seen how lots of you are afraid of different things. So we're going to carry on with that theme today, thinking about how God gives us courage. So enough from me. Let us watch our favourite videos, the uh oh uh, that's just coming up. See you later. Slapstick Theatre, David and Goliath. This is David. Hey! David was a shepherd who lived in Bethlehem. David was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel when he was just a boy. But David had to wait a very long time until that promise would come true because there was another king of Israel named Saul. Saul led the armies of Israel. One day, King Saul was with his army near the Valley of Elah. On the other side of this valley, the Philistines, the enemies of Israel, gathered their army ready to fight. The Philistines had a giant warrior named Goliath who challenged the Israelites. Hey! Goliath spoke badly of God and his people. He shouted and taunted them, saying, Choose one man to come down here and fight me. The Israelites and King Saul were very afraid. Meanwhile, David's father sent David to bring some food to his brothers and their captain. Goliath came out of the Philistines' army, and David heard him shout his usual mean taunts to the army of Israel. Whoa, what? As soon as the Israelites saw Goliath, they began to run away in fright. See ya. David asked, who is this Philistine anyway? that he has allowed to defy the armies of the living God. David's questions were reported to King Saul, and the king sent for him. Uh, hi. David said, don't worry about this Philistine. I'll go fight him. Saul said, there's no way you can fight him and win. You're only a boy. Wait. But David told Saul that he had taken care of his father's sheep and rescued them from lions and bears. Then David declared, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and bear will rescue me from this Philistine. So Saul said, All right, go ahead and may the Lord be with you. David picked up five smooth stones from a stream. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight Goliath. When Goliath saw him coming, he sneered at him and yelled bad things at David. <laughs> But David said, 
You come to me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of Heaven's armies. Goliath moved closer to attack, and David quickly ran out to meet him. He hurled a stone from his sling and hit Goliath in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell to the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. But he knew the power of God and trusted God to win the battle against the giant. Write it on the board, please. It's Psalm 3. Psalm 3. No, no, no. Psalm. Pa, sa, a, o, m. 3, verse 3. But you, Lord. But you, you Lord. Are a shield around me. Or a shield around me. <laughs> My glory. My glory. The one who lifts my head high. The one who lifts my head high. It's really long. Let's tell everyone. But you, Lord, are the shield around me, my glory and the one who lifts my head high. Psalm 3, verse 3. Can I go now? Andy, have you finished the preparation for your talk? Ninja spit. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I have, yeah. Dad, you're gonna need this. Oh. And these. Oh. That should work. Hmm. Hi, good morning everyone. My name's Andy. I'm Corey and Paige's dad and I'm going to talk to you this morning about the great story of David and Goliath. Psst, it's Goliath. What? It's Goliath. No, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's Goliath. Goliath. Hi, Jared. Yes, yeah, Andy. Is it, is it David and Goliath? What? Goli are you... I'm ringing up Mike, Jared. So uh, it turns out it is David and Goliath. I had it confirmed with Jared and Mike, so apologies for that, but hope the rest of it be a bit better. David and Goliath. David, this little shepherd boy, just a little young lad looking after some sheep and his brothers were all going off to war. And yet, this is a story about courage? Sometimes, I guess, maybe we can feel a bit like David being young, where you maybe don't feel too important and maybe other people are going off and doing really good stuff. But we know this about David. God's spirit was with him. It didn't matter that he wasn't the tallest or the biggest or the best. God's spirit was with him. And that's what we're going to do about today is that we can have courage because God's spirit can be with you. Now, I think, to be honest, a lot of people would have been a bit afraid of Goliath. It was nine feet tall and pretty big. And even Saul said to David, you're only a boy, you can't do it. But unlike those that were cowering in forts like this or being a bit scared, David had something about him. Because he knew that if God was going to look after him when he was a shepherd from things like lions and bears, then God's going to look after him in anything. Because David knew that God was with him. Now Goliath, he might have been really big, but Goliath trusted in himself. 
in his fancy helmet, in his big sword, in his armour, he trusted in himself. But David, being just little but knowing that God's spirit was with him, trusted in God. And for you guys, you might feel a bit small, but I want to say this. If you put your trust in God and ask him to give you his spirit, then you can do great things. You might have things in your life that maybe scare you a bit, a bit like a Goliath where you think, I can't overcome this. But you know what? With God's spirit, we can overcome the Goliaths in our lives. You don't have to be the biggest or the strongest or the cleverest. You just have to trust in God, just like David did. So I say to you this morning, however old, however tall, whatever size or shape you are, put your trust in God. Let his spirit fall upon you and you can do great things with God. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. What was that, Andy? Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. I see. So remember, kids, if you're feeling that something is difficult or you're feeling scared, then remember, you can worship. Let's follow Molly's actions. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Let's worship together then, guys. Are you ready? Okay, three, two, one. Every giant will fall. The mountains will move. Every chain of the past is broken into all the fear of the lies. I'm seeing in the truth. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible with you. Bye, kids. Nothing is impossible with the Lord. Hi, church habits. I'm going to do a play. I hope that God makes it better and people actually get better at writing. Amen. Dear Father God, I pray for the doctors, key workers and everyone who's helping out during this lockdown. And I hope everyone from the lantern is doing okay that soon this virus will be over. Amen. So what was God thinking when he made the platypus? Well, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure, but I do have a little theory. So you may have heard people talk about how we are made in God's image, and that's really, really cool, because that sort of means that the things that we have that are really, really good, well, they've come out of God. So things like emotions, the fact that we can feel happy and sad and love, and all those other things, well, actually that's because God has those same emotions as well. And in the same way, we have a sense of humour because God has a sense of humour. So when I think about the platypus, all I can think of really is because maybe God thought, you know what, I'm going to have some fun with this. And he created something just really imaginative and creative. But also, on the flip side, because it's a piece of God's creation, it's also perfect in so many ways as well. So although I don't really know what God was thinking when we made the platypus, it is a mix of things and it's great anyway because God made it. Hope that helps. God and me. Before I knew Jesus, I felt worried about being poorly and not sleeping at night. Since letting Jesus into my life, I feel less worried and sleep very well. When I feel worried, I pray. God is good, Jesus loves me, Holy Spirit fill me. God is good, God is in control, God is trustworthy, God is faithful. God loves me, God cares for me. Find your rest in the shadow of, of the Almighty. great new song by Worship For Everyone and I love it. See if you can follow along with my actions. One of them goes a bit like this. Sling shot! I'm scared. 
courage to face the day You're the power in me Strength when I am weak When I feel little like little David You're the power in me When I feel little like little David You're the power in my Awesome stuff. I love that slingshot. You're the power in me. Perhaps you can have a go at learning that song. I think it's online on YouTube. Let's check it out and have a learn. And perhaps when we come back in kids church in a few months time, we can all sing that together. So we heard today that David had courage to face Goliath because he had the Holy Spirit. And it was great to hear from Bethany and how God is helping her. Now, when we become a Christian, the Holy Spirit comes and is with us. But sometimes we forget about him. And that's why we need to spend time reading our Bibles, listening to God, chatting to him and being close to him. So I don't know about you, but I need more of the Holy Spirit to help me each and every day. Now, you've probably got the rest of your family sitting there watching with you. So how about we all close our eyes? No peeping. You all closed your eyes. And if you would like the Holy Spirit to help you and give you more courage for whatever it is that you are facing, whatever the giant is in your life, how about you hold out your hands now? I'm going to close our eyes and I'm going to say a prayer. Jesus, thank you for giving us your Holy Spirit. And we ask that you come and refill us, fill us up to overflowing. Give us your courage to face our fears and the things we're afraid of. And to know that you are with us, that you are helping to fight our battles. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Cool. 
And you can do that anytime, wherever you are. Remember to keep talking to him. So we have nearly finished. Remember, we have our activity pack. It's available online. If you haven't already got it ready, there's lots of different things to do on there. If you're slightly older, then you might want to read 1 Samuel 17 in your Bibles. And there's a few questions on the activity sheet. There is craft to do this week. We're going to make a shield. Send me in those pictures. Lots of other colouring things. Learn the verse for this week. We have a new verse. And I will see you shortly. So bye from me. Have a good week. Bye.